The game of golf was a trendy European sport for the 16th century, with major players in Shakespeare's lifetime, like King James I and Mary, Queen of Scots, both being familiar with the game as well as playing it themselves. Despite these characters engaging with golf, it seems like the wave of popularity sideswiped England, landing instead in Scotland and France. Meaning that to answer our question this week of did Shakespeare play golf, the answer might technically be no, but the game itself was not only present but popular throughout Europe during Shakespeare's lifetime, which is why we're going to explore the 16th century version of golf right now on That Shakespeare Life. Fifteenth century golf was outlawed in Scotland by King James II, surprisingly because it was so popular that many of the men who were supposed to be training for the military were choosing to play golf instead. The disdain for golf faded in Scotland quickly, however, because by 1502, King James IV of Scotland became the country's first royal golf player. By the time King James VI comes to the throne, who would later become King James I of England, golf was decidedly a well-established Scottish sport. King James IV's royal seal of approval seems to have set off a European trend for the game of golf, and unfortunately, the game does seem to miss England, and it doesn't arrive in England as a popular sport until the reign of King Charles I, but before that, Mary Queen of Scots was carrying the game into France, where she was studying. In fact, the term caddy comes from French. It comes from the word cadet, which is referring to the military helpers for Mary Queen of Scots when she was playing golf. The first game of golf in Scotland was recorded in 1552 at St. Andrews. However, golf doesn't become an official sport for another two to 300 years in the 18th century. The course known as Montrose Lynx in Angus, Scotland, traces its history back to 1562 when golf was first established there. If you visit today, there is actually a course known as the 1562 course considered original to Montrose Lynx. Interestingly, this course does include 18 holes, and I wonder if the holes are original to the course or if they were added later after the development of official rules for golf. The reason I ask is because as far as I'm able to find, the rules for how to play were largely made up prior to the organized definition of golf that showed up in the 18th century. So you and your buddies just got together and decided how you wanted to play. There are some primary documents that shed light on your options, or I guess maybe we should say variations, for how the game was played. One way was for people to spread out on a large piece of open space and take turns hitting balls out into the openness. In closer proximity, if you were playing in a town or a village, for example, it seems that you would pick a destination, like a churchyard or maybe a vacant street, and challenge your buddies to see who could hit your ball into that location. In both instances, players were using sticks, usually bent sticks that looked a lot more like hockey sticks than our modern golf club, but they were hitting the small balls, which were usually small rocks or pebbles, into a particular location. As far as hitting your ball into a hole, which is what we think of with modern day golf, we know that that was happening in some measure because in 1636, when the book Vocabula was published, descriptions of the game of golf are used to define certain Latin words. In this description, the depiction of golf includes golf holes. This is known to many historians as the first reference to golf holes in print. So while no, it doesn't seem like Shakespeare himself would have been into golf, nor really anybody in England playing golf during this part of the 16th and early 17th century, it does seem to have been an extremely popular sport very nearby to Shakespeare in Scotland and in France. That's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>